Uh, this morning, we're going to have two amazing lecturers. The first is going to be David May from Toulouse. He's a very great expert in all kinds of surgery as perio implantology and bone grafting. Uh, you probably know him as his more than seven years experience as an international lecturer. And he write quite a lot of articles about mainly subcortical implant placement, allograft uh, techniques, and also full art rehabilitation with a digital workflow, which is going to be the great topic of the day. So uh, David going to give us all his advices, tools, tricks, tips uh, to be predictable and to get into the best succeed you can expect uh, about such kind of techniques which are so important and fragile for patients. So David, welcome here. Thank you, Carol. Thank you very much. Thank you for these words. Okay. Uh, shall I share my screen right now? Exactly. You can go on. Actually, participants just on the way. And so the floor is yours. Okay, thanks a lot. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes, everything's fine? Actually, it's perfect. Okay, great. So again, uh, thank you, Carol, for these words and hello to, to everyone. Um, tries and goals. Why such a title? Uh, try not because I come from Toulouse and also the Scarol, we were in the same university, even if I'm much younger than her, of course. Uh, and in Toulouse, we have a great rugby team, uh, very famous in all the country and all, even in Europe. And last year, uh, they, we won the French championship for the 20th time. But a try is the way to get points in a rugby match and also it is what happens when you do something and you're not sure it will work and it is just the same thing in French we have a word that has these two significations and goals not because thanks to these uh, amazing young players two years ago uh, France was world champion in soccer a goal is something you want to achieve and again in french we have a word to say the same thing with these two significations okay so i'm not such a sporty guy i am uh, dr david may from france implantologist just as you and uh, i am a key opinion leader for the global d company and also for the three shape company and because I have these uh, two uh, caps on my head, I make uh, quite a lot of researches on all this digital workflow and guided surgery and so on. So yesterday, my friend Arnaud Jeu made a very nice uh, lecture about all this digital workflow we both use. Uh, I don't use exactly the same tools as him, but uh, it's very similar. So I don't think it's necessary to, to, to uh, explain the same thing again, okay. And just after me, uh, Jean-Fabien Grandjean, I'm sure will give you many tips and tricks about this uh, surgery of uh, uh, full arch treatments. So I decided to take a different angle on this topic. And to begin with, I just would like to ask you a very simple question, why? Why when you wake up in the morning, do you decide to be so nasty with your patients? Why do you decide to cut them with your blade, to create pain, to make them bleed, to drill holes in the bone? Why do you do so? And I had to answer this question at the beginning of my career because I was not so comfortable with this idea of torturing my patient. Okay. See uh, this patient and please keep this picture in mind for a few seconds. This is a, a very old case for me. So at this time, I did not uh, took the intro roll picture. So I'm sorry. Uh, I only have the x-ray. However, as clinician, I'm sure you have a nightly idea about the situation in the mouth of the patient. 
And as clinicians, we could discuss about the periodontal disease, we could discuss about uh, decays, about root treatment. And of course, the same patient. Then we could discuss about uh, bone graft, what, which material we can use. And then we could discuss about implants, one time surgery, two time surgery, why? And then we could discuss about full arch treatments, uh, immediate loading full arch, guided surgery, not guided. At this time, it was not guided. And then we could discuss about uh, the final denture, casted, uh, titanium mid, like in this situation. And then if you remember the first uh, X-ray, we could discuss about the healing of the alveolar ridge uh, and the biotype we obtained. And then we could discuss about the final denture and uh, the prosthetic gum and the fact that uh, we have some papillas with, with not the same height and uh, the quality of the material of the teeth, zirconia composite, here it is composite as this, at this time. But to be, to be honest, all these topics are not my main issue. And more than any, my first goal is only my patient satisfaction. And she is the patient right from the beginning. Okay, look at her, she's so young, she's so pretty. And she doesn't cry because I make a mistake. Of course, she cries because she's so happy. She thinks I made a miracle for her. And this is my goal. This is the reason why I wake up in the morning. And this is the story I want to live uh, with my patient. I want uh, leave this emotion. I want them to, uh, to tell me that I changed their life. Okay, this is my motivation. So what do our patient want? This is very simple. I think patients don't care about a piece of titanium in the bone. They don't care about a bone graft. What our patient want is only beautiful and useful teeth. And uh, here we have a B, here we have a U, and here we have a T. B U T, beauty. This is what I call the beauty concept. And this word, B-U-T exists in French and it doesn't mean beauty, it means goal, just like in soccer and as something you want to achieve. So this is the beauty concept, our goal is beauty. But there's another goal, this is uh, sustainability because this is a hard journey for patients, this is expensive, this is maybe painful, this is long, so it has to be sustainable. So now we have an S, and because we have two goals, it's a plural word. Okay. Uh, so what is beauty? Beauty is a subjective notion. Some people could consider this female sculpture from antique Greece, Venus from Milos in Musée du Louvre in Paris. They might consider this a beauty. And other people might consider this other female sculpture is also beauty and maybe they would buy it, they would want to buy it. So beauty is only a question of point of view. And in order to be uh, sure about what beauty is, uh, in order to share the same vision of what beauty is with my patient, I am the big user of the, uh, the DSD uh, protocol. And uh, it's not exactly the same thing my friend Arnaud Jeux uses, but this is very uh, easy for me. It only takes uh, maybe less than 10 minutes to realize a smile design on my iPad next to my patient. This is immediate. This is very comfortable. Of course, Arnaud uh, explained yesterday the power of the smile cloud, where you can choose different shapes for the teeth, and this is very important. Okay, and this is a brilliant tool, but I think uh, as soon as you place the middle of the smile uh, in the middle of the, uh, of the face, as soon as you get uh, a, an horizontal line uh, in the good position, and as soon as you respect uh, the good proportions, you have done maybe 98% of the job. So for me, this is uh, very comfortable to use this. But if we talk about teeth, we only talk about the white part of the smile, and of course, we also have to talk about the pink part of the smile. 
because soft tissue profile is very important if we want to get our patient satisfaction okay and some years ago uh, some uh, famous dentist explained it was not possible to have papillas around an implant of course it is possible you just have to understand the environment in which one you are working and you have to play with this environment and you have to respect some very simple rules and let me share some of the rules I follow in my everyday practice. I consider implantology is not surgery. I consider implantology is only prosthesis. It is only a way to make nice prosthesis. It is only a way, uh, it is only a tool to create prosthesis. Okay. And again, as my main goal, I think modern implantology quest today must be prosthesis, prosthesis aesthetic quality. And also, of course, Ar Arnaud, as Arnaud says yesterday with the mojo, the function, the quality of the function. But I think uh, for people, uh, the aesthetic result is even more important for most of, them, most of them, even if the function is very important, of course. Uh, and also uh, the sustainability and the sustainability of the aesthetic and sustainability of the function. If we, and if we talk about sustainability of the aesthetic, we talk about gum. And if we talk about sustainability of the function, we talk about bone for the, uh, the, um, the anchorage of the implants. So all these questions are about tissue stability. And if we talk about tissue stability, we have to talk a little bit about biology. And as the first point I would like to stress in biology, I have to talk about uh, periodontal biotype, okay. We all know uh, it is very comfortable, very easy to work with a thick biotype, both around an implant or around a natural tooth. Whereas with a thin biotype, it is difficult. You may have recession, you may uh, lose the aesthetic, the, uh, the integration of the prosthesis. And the difference is only the density and the quantity uh, of the fibers in the connective tissue. So for this reason, Years ago, I used this implant, Crestal Implant, from the Tika company, which is the former name of the Global D company. And I tried, I tried uh, to modify myself, the abutment, the profile of the abutment, in order to create this concavity. And doing this, I followed uh, the idea of Marco De Gidi, which is a great, amazing surgeon from Bologna in Italy. Uh, and my idea was to remove some titanium in order to leave more space for the connective tissue and to try to get some a thick biotype, to modify the biotype. Years later, the Tika company created this implant, twin cone implant, just the same concept. And they did not create this twin cone implant following my idea because they did not know my idea at this time. The interesting thing is that the first picture is the 13 years follow-up follow picture. And of course, uh, everything is very stable and uh, I can present uh, hundreds of pictures like that. Second point in biology is vascularization. And maybe this slide is the most important one for me today. So let's see, let's consider the difference uh, of vascularization around the natural root and around an implant. Around a natural tooth, we have some vascularization in the connective tissue, and then we have some vascularization in the sponges bone that will feed and maintain the cortical bone that does not have a, its own vascularization. And then uh, we have some vascularization in the periodontal ligament. Okay. Uh, around an implant, we have some vascularization in the connective tissue, of course, also, we have some vascularization in the sponges bone around the implant. And because there's no ligament, there's no vascularization of the ligament. And as you can see, there's no relation between the vascularization of the connective tissue to the cortical bone. Why is it important for me? See this patient. She has uh, such a thin uh, buccal plate, we can nearly see the roots. Okay, and it's not even a buccal plate, it's just a very uh, thin cortical blade. However, this is so stable. Okay, no, this is nothing. And for me, 
this cortical blade can only survive uh, thanks to the vascularization of the ligament. If you try to have the same thing around an implant, what will happen? Cortical bone will disappear. Okay, I know this because I lost the very first implant I placed 15 years ago, uh, or even more than that. And at this time, as a young implantologist, I, it was a 100% failure ratio, so not very good future for me as an implantologist. See these two implants, they were placed by a very famous implantologist years and years ago, okay, a long time ago. And I know it did not place these implants in this position. What happened? These implants for me are much too big, too large, the diameter is too important, and they were placed much too close to the cortical bone. So bone disappeared. It's not a mistake. This is what, how things uh, had to be at this time because implantologists thought uh, they had to, to find an anchorage, primary stability, stability in a big cortical uh, position of the implant. So here is uh, my concept. I choose to place my implant far away from the cortical bone because I want to have uh, sponges bone all around my implant because vascularization is in the sponges bone and I think tissue can only be stable, sustainable if they are well fed, if there's good vascularization. And the sponges bone all around my implant has to be thick enough uh, to be lively, to be well vascularized, and it will feed and maintain also the cortical bone. And if it's true in an horizontal dimension, it is, of course, also true in a vertical dimension. I want to place my implant again in the sponges bone only, and I want this sponges bone to be thick enough to feed and maintain the cortical bone. So I place my implant far away from the cortical bone. And in these full arc surgeries, I always graft Berkeley with allograft biobank with a very special recipe we call magic bone. Uh, the idea, okay, is to recreate some bone thick enough after the healing of the allograft, we get some uh, sponges bone thick enough far away from the implant. So when it's not possible uh, to, when we, when we don't have enough uh, thickness of bone to place the implant far away from the cortical bone, we modify the thickness of the alveolar ridge thanks to this allograft. See this patient again, long time ago, 12 years ago. And at this time, I did not take uh, pictures of the intraoral situation, but again, I hope as clinician, you have a clear idea about what uh, happens in the mouth of the patient. And at this time also, uh, I did uh, respect every different steps of the treatment. And I did not realize uh, immediate loading for these full arc treatments. Okay, long time ago. So first I removed, I made the extractions, I removed the teeth and see, of course, the big, big disease, uh, defects, excuse me, defects uh, I had after, after extractions. So I made allografts. See, the, 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 the healing of the alveolar ridge I obtained five months after allograft, like a brick, very, very hard, very lively blood. Okay, this is bone, this is no more graft, this is only bone of the patient. So now it's so easy to place implant in a good position. Of course, no guided surgery at this time, just my eyes and my hands and a casted bar, very old type of prosthesis. But this is not the point, here is the point. See the healing, see the biotype, remember the first X-ray, remember the situation, awful situation. See, it's like a bodybuilded uh, gum, okay? Like a Arnold Schwarzenegger gum, gum maybe. And see, 11 years later, it's so stable. It's so stable, okay? I did not clean anything before the picture, as you can see on the right side of the picture. Uh, everything is stable and there's no reason why this should disappear because it became bone of the patient. So, which type of implant has to be chosen 
to make uh, this kind of uh, surgeries and to, to play with biology because there are so many, so many different bronze models and everything. Some with holes, some short ones, some long ones, some wide ones, narrow ones with big threads, nearly no threads. Well, it's very difficult to make you a clear idea. I think the main thing to consider is that less titanium is more space for tissues and we want to respect tissues because we work in tissues and we play, we place, uh, we also play with tissues, but we place our implants uh, in a biological environment. So if you place an implant <clears throat> in this uh, bone level position, as soon as you put a prosthetic, you screw a prosthetic range on it, you might squeeze, you might eat, uh, pinch the gum and then create a thin biotype. Whereas if you place your implant in a more deep uh, position, subcrestal position, then you leave more space for the gum, for the connective tissue, and you may create the condition to get a thick biotype. And I do even more than that. I place my implant in a very, very deep position. I place this implant three millimeter below the crystal bone. So it's not anymore an infracrystal position. This is a subcortical placement. This is not under the surface, under the layer of the, of the, um, the crest. This is under the thickness of the cortical bone. Okay, and you know why? Because I want some sponges bone all around my implants because I want all of these uh, tissues around the implant to be perfectly uh, vascularized. So my idea again is to create a biological O-ring where each layer will be thick enough to be sustainable. I want a, on the top of my implant, of course on the sides of, also of my implant, but mostly on the top of my implant. I want some sponges bone to be thick enough that it will be able to feed and maintain the cortical bone. And this cortical bone will also will maintain some connective tissue that will be thick enough to look like a thick biotype. So doing this, everything is very stable. It is locked, implant is locked in the bone. It is buried in the bone. Uh, you all know what O-ring is. This is this uh, uh, black uh, plastic circles we all have around our micromotors. So why three millimeters? Uh, the first point, first answer is because our colleagues, orthodontists, uh, when they imagine the mini screws treatment in orthodonty, uh, realize some studies uh, to measure the average thickness of the cortical bone on the top of the alveolar ridge, where we have to, to drill to place our implants. And they could uh, measure an average uh, thickness of 1.5, a little bit less, but 1.5 millimeter. So I thought, well, if I want this 1.5 millimeter to be feed, fed and maintained, I, at the least, I should uh, leave the same uh, thickness of sponges bone below this cortical bone of 1.5. So 1.5 plus 1.5 makes three millimeters uh, of placement below the crystal bone. But there's another reason, and this is maybe the real reason it is so easy to measure three millimeters with your surgical kit because the average uh, length of the implants have a step of 1.5 millimeter so it is very easy to measure a drilling of the socket three millimeter more deep than the length of the implant very simple if i want to place a six millimeter implant i can drill i will drill a 9.5 millimeter i don't have so much bone so it's not three it's 2.5 in this situation in all for all the other implants it is possible to measure a drilling of the socket that is three millimeter deeper than the length of the implant i have everything already in my surgical kit nothing to buy just to understand what i have in my hands Look at these two implants, okay. Uh, for me, it is just like uh, riding a motorcycle, just like Carol does. Uh, on the right side of the picture, it is like riding a motorcycle without a helmet. And 
on the left side, it is like Carol. Uh, like Carol. Yes, it is like Carol because it is like riding a motorcycle with a helmet. Okay, and we know Carol's choice. It is on the left side. Uh, why do I say that? Because it is not because uh, you don't have a helmet uh, on your motorcycle, then you will have an accident. Okay. And on the right side of the picture, uh, there's no protection for the implant, but there's no disease at all at this day. Okay, perfect. But it, is, will, it will only be a question of chance. The sustainability of this implant will only be a question of chance. And today we know we have many discussions about how to treat peri On the left side of the picture, I consider the biological O-ring as a protection, as a lock to prevent peri uh, So. Uh, when you have an accident riding a motorcycle, your helmet can save your life, but it's not because you don't wear it that you will have an accident. Okay, I hope you get my ID and I hope you have the vision of Carol riding her, her, her motorcycle with a helmet. Uh, and only a few months between these two different implants. Okay, but not for me at all the same, uh, the same prediction, the same future for these implants in the case of an attack by bacterial. Another picture, very simple, very deep position of this implant, okay. Uh, the only thing I want to say is that it is a, a 10 years following, uh, follow up picture. Um, so everything is stable and of course, again, thousands of pictures like that. For all these treatments of full arc, see uh, the placement of the implants different type of prosthesis, Swiss uh, school with these uh, li four little bridges. Of course, no guided surgery at this time, same situation. Casted bar, no guided surgery at this time, no guided surgery at this time, short implant, very short implant. Uh, Mill titanium bar, first patient, no guided surgery. Okay, so I say no guided surgery, no guided surgery. Why? Why do I say so? And why do I use all uh, everyday guided surgery? If we consider ourselves, our, our dentist, as we are drivers, uh, maybe some of us, some dentists, are more efficient than the others, okay? But we are not dentists, we are implantologists, so we are experts, okay? Uh, we take risks, uh, we have to understand exactly what we are doing, and we have to, to know perfectly the biology and the environment we are working with. And uh, even if we are experts, sometimes something uh, can happen because uh, it is not an easy way, okay? And it is a question of specialists and very small mistake like this one. Uh, and then we can crash and have troubles. And this is about implantology, in my opinion. And using guided surgery is not a help at all. It is more difficult for me to place an implant uh, using guided surgery. So I disagree with my friend Arnaud Jeux yesterday. It is more difficult uh, than uh, placing it without anything. It is like maybe riding this car with these gloves and this uh, sleeping travel mask. Okay, and maybe we can crash without any reason, just I like Romain Grosjean did uh, on this picture. So why do I use it? I only use it because I can have a more predictable prosthetic result. Because with this digital workflow, if I know where the implant will be, thanks to uh, the guided surgery, then it is so easy uh, to prepare everything in the lab and not with the patient uh, on my chair, not during the surgical time. It's, it's so easy to prepare a perfect temporary crown with the good shape, uh, if we copy the shape of the other incisor. And then it's possible to uh, prepare the, um, the emergency profile, emergence profile uh, of uh, this temporary crown. And uh, instead of having a circle with the traditional prosthetic range, we can modify it and maybe have, the, have something much more like a triangle, much more biomimetic, and this will uh, maintain the papillas uh, and the after healing period uh, we can have a great result because 
uh, healing will be guided by this temporary crown. And because our implant is in a subcortical position, we have much height uh, from the circle to go to come from the circle uh, on the top of the implant to this triangle uh, on the gum uh, at the gum level. And all the time, I ask my lab to remove some material in order to leave more space for the tissues. So I want to get this uh, big uh, concavity because I want to have space for the tissues for them to be stable. So, of course, for uh, experienced uh, surgeons, it is possible to work without uh, digital workflow. I show you at the beginning the central incisor with be uh, beautiful papillas. But today, even for me, uh, and I think even for everyone, it is easier it's more predictable, okay? Everything, and it's, it's faster for, for, for our patients. Last patient. Uh, see the patient, see the DSD, uh, so the prosthetic project. And <clears throat> intraoral situation, okay. Uh, in the software, okay, just as Arno showed uh, yesterday, uh, we have the DICOM, and then we have the STL files, and just like my friend Arnaud, I keep uh, some teeth to maintain the guide and to be sure about the guide positioning. And then we have the 3D mockup that is realized out, realized out of uh, the 2D planification. Okay, the smile design. And then it's possible to generate the guide. And then we print the guide. This is posed on the mirror, uh, very precise again. And here is the final, not final reason. Here is the end of the surgery, and as you can see, uh, this is very predictable and very similar to the prosthetic project. So we have a satisfied patient, and here is the situation two weeks after surgery. At the time, I removed sutures. Okay. Here is the final danger. Okay. Zirconia uh, mild. Here is the healing trouble two weeks after surgery, and here is the final healing. And what I did is just nothing. Let, leave, give time to biology. Leave, let biology do its own job. So uh, initial situation and final situation, very few modifications uh, because the patient asked for. Not the same man, not the same life, okay, as you can see. And what is interesting is that here is the planification and the final result. Okay. What I would like you to take home is these three very simple ideas. First one, keep focus on your goals. And my goals are BUT, beautiful and useful teeth, and sustainability. Play with the, bi with the biology using the subcortical positioning, three millimeter below crestal bone. And then you can modify the biotype and respect the, vascular, the vascularization uh, in order to get uh, sustainability of the tissues. And choose guided surgery for the good reason, not as a help to place your implant in the good position, because you have to place your implant, even in a, on the software, you have to take a decision about where the implant has to be. And if you don't know anything about implantology or bono, or, or, or what surgery is, you might put it in the wrong position on your software. So guided surgery only helps you to place it uh, in a similar position than you imagine during your planification, but it does not say you have to place your implant, where to place your implant, okay. Uh, as you understood, I consider guided surgery only as a way to preserve prosthetic project. Uh, I don't know where people from the audience uh, are, uh, are in which country. Uh, next Monday in France, uh, our clinics are allowed to open again and many uh, dentists are uh, afraid of not having enough uh, protection material and maybe don't have enough masks. So uh, these are just some ideas to help you to reopen uh, your, your clinics waiting from the, the, the real mask to arrive. And I would like to thank you for your attention. Thanks a lot, David. It was a very great lecture with so many messages, and the paper message did it perfectly. Uh, so thanks a lot for all of this. Um, just one or two things, but just to okay to give a 
okay to 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 make your message stronger again so is as you said is long term necessitates a bone treatment proper with bone grafting and allograft lead to better results then new kind of implants uh, are more narrow and more subcortical and surgeon are using more and more computer assistance and it's meaning everything is the same but everything is different this is nothing to, uh, you said everything my dear is we've got a, a great question from guillaume and uh, thank you very much for your beautiful presentation and he, he asks you if there is any kind of consensus in the scientific articles or if it's a statement of your own experience uh, comparing to the subcortical placement and mainly the three millimeter subcortical placement. Uh, unfortunately, uh, because I am a private uh, dentist, okay, I'm not in a hospital or anything, uh, I did not make any study, any real study. Uh, so uh, at the, the beginning, it's mostly my sensations and my feeling as a clinician. Okay, but what I see uh, this, uh, this year, this month, is that more and more people are uh, saying to me, well, I think you're right. I think this is the, this is the maybe uh, everything is logical with this subcortical placement. So I really hope one day a university might be a real study to prove uh, the advantage of this uh, subcortical placement. But I did not realize this. Uh, out of uh, uh, any study. It was just something logical to me. Great. Uh, I had a question myself because I just used 1.5 to 2 millimeters uh, insertion. And uh, the question is on some patients, the spongy spoon is very poor quality on D4. And don't you shy, uh, don't you have any problem in your experience? with a deep subcortical placement and when you are only in the spongious bone with a very low stabilization of your implants. Okay. Um, no, I don't have problem because uh, once you know your, your system, your surgical kit, and I, I would say uh, once you understand deeply what you are doing and what you can, how you can play with all the tools that are in your surgical kit, it is just possible to adapt uh, the, the preparation of the socket, the drilling of the socket uh, to the density of the sponges bone. And as clinician, you have a feeling and uh, you know, your, your hands, your fingers tell you this density. Of course, you see it on the CT scan, but you, 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 nothing replaces your hands. So if I know, if I think uh, this, uh, the sponges bone will be too much uh, smooth, D4. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't uh, prepare my socket too much and I let the implant work by itself. So maybe uh, I, I do not respect the, the, the ultimate protocol. I do, uh, I, do in a diff I do it in a different way, more excessive. I drill more, I drill less, excuse me, uh, yeah, both in different. diameter and in length. And usually what I do is a stepped socket. So I drill uh, a depth of the socket uh, length of the implant plus three millimeters. And I use the final drill only for the length of the socket. So uh, in the apical part of the socket, there's only a very narrow drilling. And where the th on the apical portion of the implant, where the thread is more aggressive, uh, the implant will get much uh, bone to bite it like a tiger. Okay, mm -hmm. so playing only with the drilling, it's very possible to adapt uh, the, the situation to the bone quality. Cool, thanks a lot, David, for a great lecture. I know you you've got to... Do you still have your motorcycle? Yeah, for sure. Always motorcycle with a helmet. Uh, just something, if there is any kind of question from all of the audience, Oh, Benjamin Fitushi from uh, Lyon is asking you, do you do immediate prosthesis uh, for foulage before the surgery or do you prefer to make an impression after the surgery? 
Okay, Benjamin, I'm sure you know the answer because I know you. Uh, of course, the idea, I mean, I'm sorry if I was not clear during this, uh, this webinar because this is a fundamental idea and uh, I might not have been clear enough. Uh, the, the point of digital workflow is not at all about um, uh, impression, digital impression. I had some conversation yesterday on uh, Facebook and someone asked me after uh, the, the, the evidence, uh, proven evidence with studies about the, the impression, digital impression. But I, I said this is not the point of digital workflow. Digital impression is just a very small part of digital workflow. The interesting thing in digital workflow is that it is possible to design and to mill the temporary denture before the time of surgery. So, of course, in this full arch treatment, this is the answer for Benjamin, in this full arch treatment, uh, temporary denture is realized before the surgery. So during the time of surgery, it is real immediate loading uh, protocol. We removed it, placed the implant graft and placed the temporary denture at the end of surgery. No impression. Every, everything has been planned before and realized before thanks to this digital workflow. And this is the point, this is the key point of this digital workflow, in my opinion, and not at all uh, digital impressions uh, of, uh, of the position of the implants. Okay, thanks a lot, David. 